Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and welcome to Java tutorial number 28, I believe this is. In this tutorial, I will be discussing how to actually rotate an image around an axis. Now, as many of you have been wondering as you've been watching my Java image tutorials, um, there are tons of applications with this inside of an actual game. However, I've been getting a lot of emails uh, and private messages from people who want to know, will they have to create a new image for each direction um, that the image could be? So, for example, if something's flying in the air and it's spinning, will they have to create a new image for every degree mark? Well, the answer is no. There is definitely a way to rotate an image programmatically. And here's the concept. I'm just going to demonstrate it using this wall that I created in the last tutorial. So what we're actually going to want to do is we're actually going to take a copy of this image. So we're going to select the whole thing and copy it. And then we're going to want to move it to a new canvas. Now keep in mind this is all going to be done programmatically. Then once it's moved to a new canvas, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for effect. Once it's actually moved to the new canvas, what we're going to want to do is we're just going to go ahead and take this new image. Keep in mind this is a completely new image and we're going to want to grab it right around the center. Once we grab it right around the center, all we want to do is we want to take that image and rotate it. However, we can't simply rotate an image in Java. So what we want to do instead is we want to get the component that's drawing the image. And once we get the component that's drawing the image, we can go ahead and tell the component that's drawing the image, hey, draw everything at a certain rotation. So if we want to actually rotate the image uh, 90 degrees, we tell it, hey, draw the image rotated 90 degrees. And what we want to do is tell it to rotate around this axis exactly where the middle of this image is. Now, usually this would be a problem because graphics, um, then your whole level would be turned um, one way. Or whatever you're trying to draw, everything that you're trying to draw would be rotated. However, since we copied this image into a new canvas, we can actually just grab the um, graphics that are drawing this image and only this image on this new canvas. So then we tell it to rotate 90 degrees and then place the I image, like so. And then once it's placed the image, all we need to do is return this new image so our other graphics can place the image like this instead of actually rotating itself all the way around. So now that we know the concept behind actually rotating an image, let's go ahead and open our image loading tutorial class that I've been working on for the past three videos. So in this class currently, what we have is we have um, an image, our wall that we were just touching, and a spiral image, and we actually highlight the in area of collision. If this interests you, please go ahead and consult Java tutorial number 27, which talks about image collisions. And in order to work with image collisions, we went ahead and altered the image class into a rectangle image class. This rectangle image class contains an image and a rectangle. But let's go ahead and talk about rotating images. So what we want to do is we actually want to embed right inside of our rectangle image class a method that we can actually just go ahead and rotate the image. So we're just going to say public void rotate image. And um, here we want to actually specify um, a, a degrees amount. So we're going to say double degrees. So the first thing we're actually going to want to do is we're going to want to um, get... So just like in our uh, demonstration, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new canvas that we can just copy this image on. Now these new canvases aren't actually canvases, but we're just creating a new blank image. So we're going to create a new buffered image to actually store the copy of the image on. So we're going to say buffered image, and we're just going to call this blank canvas is equal to new buffered image. And we're just going to go ahead and import buffered image uh, for the best effect. And then if we go ahead and look at the parameters, we can see that we need a width, a height, and an image type. Well, in order to get the width and the height, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do the same thing that we did when actually creating the rectangle around the image. So we're going to create a new image icon that will actually allow us to get the width and the height. So we're going to say image icon, and we're just going to call it icon again, equals new image icon. And we're going to send in this.img, which is our private image instance variable. And then we can actually go ahead and get the width and the height of the image. So we're creating a new blank canvas that is exactly the same width and exactly the same height of the image that we actually want to flip. So we're going to say icon.getWidth, or icon width rather, and icon.getIconHeight. 
So now we essentially have a, oh actually, and on top of that we also want to declare the image type. So in order to do this we're just going to say buffered image dot type. Um, and then we have several types to choose from from this list here. Now what you can actually do is use any of these types, however we're going to use ARGB because that supports all RGB colors and alpha transparency. So now we actually have our blank canvas that we can go ahead and copy the image over. So in order to actually copy the image over, well first before we draw the image onto the actual canvas, we need to actually rotate uh, the, the, um, the graphics that draw onto the canvas. So imagine this like a blank canvas and you have a stamp. Now you want to rotate the stamp's image. Instead of placing the, the stamp down on the, the canvas and then rotating the canvas, you want to just rotate the stamp. So that's what we're doing. We're rotating the graphics, which is essentially our stamp. So we're going to create a new graphics 2D object. Graphics 2D, G2 equals 2. And then we're going to want to get the blank canvas's uh, graphics. So we're just going to cast it as a graphics 2D because we created a graphics 2D object. And then we're going to say uh, blank canvas dot get graphics. So now that we have the actual stamp or graphics of the blank canvas, we can go ahead and rotate it. So we're just going to say g2.rotate. And as you can see, it asks for um, a x point and y point to, ac to rotate around, and then a theta to actually rotate the image. Now, in our parameters, we actually specified a degrees amount that we wanted to rotate the image by. However, this specifies theta, which is in radians. So we're going to actually need to convert from degrees to radians. Now this functionality is actually built into the Java's math class. So we can say math dot two radians and go ahead and send in our degrees value. It will then convert the degree value to a radian value between zero and two pi. The next thing we need to specify is our x and our y. And if you'll remember from our video demonstration, we actually wanted to get the x and the y in the center of the image so we could rotate it that way. So in order to do that, we're just going to want to get the icon's width and divide it by 2 and the icon's height and divide it by 2. So we can say icon dot get icon width and divide that by 2 and that will be our uh, x and then icon dot get icon height and divide that by 2 and that will be our y. So now we have a rotate or now we have our stamp that has effectively rotated the amount of degrees that we stated. So now all we want to do is we want to actually place that stamp down to paper. We're just going to want to tell it to g2.drawImage. Now since the canvas is exactly the same size as um, our image, we can just go ahead and tell it to draw this dot, oops, this dot img. And once again, since it's the exact same size, um, we can go ahead and just place it at 0, 0. And then for image observer, well, we can just use um, the image observer. We can go ahead and set that as a parameter. So in our rotate image, we're just going to set image observer O, and then send an O as a parameter there. And don't forget to do it in the line with a semicolon. So now what we're doing is we're placing our stamp at the very top left corner of our canvas, which is the exact same size as the stamp, mind you. And then we're simply drawing the image. Now the stamp is rotated. So now we've got our drawn image. So now we have a um, blank canvas with our stamp picture on it. Now all we need to do is actually set our current image to the rotated image. So we just need to say this dot img equals um, our blank canvas, which now is not blank anymore. So now that we're done with that, our rotate image um, method should work as planned. So if we go ahead and run this application, we can go ahead and look at our spiral. As you can see, the spiral starts at the top, and um, it goes from there. So let's go ahead and try to rotate it 90 degrees to the right. So right after we declare the spiral image, we're going to say spiral to dot rotate image, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees to the right, and the image observer is going to be this, which is the applet. And then if we actually run this, we can see that the top of the spiral is now at the right which means that our rotate image did in fact work. Notice that our collision is still at the same point because it is a square image. So we can actually test this out by rotating it 45 degrees. And now you can see that the spiral is in fact in, a, um, in the corner here. And you will also notice that the quality of the image is reduced a little bit. 
And that will happen with kind of odd increments, because um, when you actually rotate an image, um, rotating it in those, or rotating a square image in non-90 degree increments is not really, it's not really good for the image's health, if you will. So let's go ahead and flip it entirely upside down by rotating it 180 degrees. And as you can see, we now have it in upside down spiral. We can do the same thing with the wall. We can say spiral, which is our wall, dot rotate image. And we're going to flip that 45 degrees and call that this. And then let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, <laughs> our image is now rotated 45 degrees. But now our problem lies within our rectangle image class. When we actually rotate the image, we don't actually rotate the rectangle at all. And I don't even know if the rectangle class supports rotation. However, we can always check. So let's try to rotate the rectangle. This dot rect dot rotate. Well, it doesn't look possible. Um, I'm sure there is some way to rotate the rectangle. Maybe you would have to use the rectangle 2D class. But I'm sure there's some way to actually rotate a rectangle and turn it into a diamond, as we have here. In fact, I know there's a way to actually get a um, just a quadrilateral going that is shaped like a diamond. However, for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it like this. So we're just going to change the wall and rotate it 90 degrees. And we effectively have a wall that's rotated 90 degrees. So now we have a complete <laughs> image tutorial, essentially. We can move the images, we can um, rotate the images, and we can actually check if the images collide, all using this rectangle image class that we created. So hopefully you learned a lot from this tutorial. If you didn't, um, well, there's definitely code posted in the description, as well as a my apologies, as well as a link to the BP Forms discussion. So if you have any questions, you can either head over to BP Forms or you can leave them in the comments, which um, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible, but if I don't, somebody else will. They always do. Alright, so thanks again for watching this tutorial. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a fantastic day. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.